Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the table. Today, we are taking a look at a recent eBay pickup. This is a Benchmade Model 970S, the Emerson CQC7. And now this model of knife was manufactured back in the mid 90s by, by a Benchmade, and they have been long discontinued. So this particular knife that I picked up has been well used and well loved for the past 20 plus years and so I wanted to purchase it not only because it's somewhat rare to get a hand, get a hold of nowadays but I wanted to clean it up and you know document that process and just you know show you guys you know the process of cleaning an old knife and now this knife has been through a lot of wear and tear um, we can see this is the Tanto serrated blade version it's an ATS 34 blade um, you can see a lot of wear and just, just uh, markings on it. Uh, these knives were originally bead blasted. And uh, this one, you can see the bead blast is essentially gone. You know, that wear is just complete. You can barely see the markings on the blade anymore. And while I want to clean it up, I do want to try and maintain the original markings as nicely as possible. Um, we can see the lockup is complete. Uh, there's still really no play in the blade, but that lockup is at 100% from a lot of use. Um, the G10 scales are very worn. They're pretty smooth, actually. Um, but overall, for a knife this age, the, the condition isn't really that bad. It's just dirty. And so there's probably going to be some rust uh, under the scales, under the blade, the parts that we can't see. Um, but that being said, I'm excited about taking this knife apart and just, you know, showing everyone the process of cleaning it. And so... Again, being a used, well-used knife, um, the edge on this knife is completely dull. There is nothing left of it at all. Um, it's a chisel ground Tanto blade. So let's go ahead and take this knife apart and see how it goes. So the body screws on this knife are T6 Torx bit screws and luckily after all these years they're coming out just fine. None of them are stripping out or giving any problems. The screws go all the way through the body and again they thread into the rear scale on these uh, metal inserts that are there. The faces of these Torx screws do have some surface rust and wear on them, so that's going to be part of the cleaning process to get those nice and cleaned up. The overall disassembly of this knife was really easy. I've had some that were a bear to take apart, but this one just came right apart. So we can just see the full titanium liners there. Have a lot of wear on them, you know? Not too bad though. They'll clean up real nice. We have a nice wide washer on the show side, and then a smaller washer on the lock side. Now this is kind of gross, just <laughs> this plastic spacer, uh, just really grody. A lot of wear in there, a lot of gunk, this pocket lint. And the blade here, you can just see, you know, under the scales, just a lot of discoloration a lot of surface rust and we'll be cleaning that up or doing my best to clean that up essentially and taking this pocket clip off i'm pretty sure this is not the original pocket clip that came with the knife um, it is really worn but i'm thinking i'm just going to replace it um, all of the images i've seen of this knife have an older style pocket clip that says benchmade usa on it as opposed to just benchmade um, this is one of the later clips that was painted, so that's why it's so worn. So I think I'm definitely just going to replace the clip. But yeah, taking the whole knife apart, not a single screw stripped or had any trouble. They're just kind of dirty. So there's the smaller washer right there.
So uh, just to start the cleaning process off, we're going to try and clean up all the individual parts. So all the, all the hardware I'm going to soak in vinegar and just leave it overnight. And that usually does a pretty good job of getting rid of um, surface rust. So anything that I think could use a vinegar bath is going to sit in there overnight. Same thing with the blade too. I want that rust to just come right off when I start scrubbing it. For the pocket clip, my idea is to strip off the paint and see how it comes out. I'm going to replace it anyway, but I still want to see if I can clean it up. So some acetone hopefully will help scraping off that paint a lot easier. So we'll let that sit. And these titanium liners don't quite fit in this container, but I'm going to still soak them in vinegar and uh, just to help clean, help the cleaning process out. First, we're going to start with cleaning off the scales, these G10 scales. I'm just putting some oven cleaner on there. Pretty heavy duty, but they are kind of old and they do have a lot of wear. So hopefully this will just help loosen up any surface grime on them. And so I'm going to let that sit for a while and we'll come back to it. Um, scrub them down. Give them a good rinsing with water too, because you can see the dry residue from the oven cleaner kind of sticks to the G10. So we definitely are going to want to rinse these off with water. So yeah, overall the G10 came out pretty nice. Um, mostly just with this toothbrush, but I also used a magic eraser, which was actually pretty impressive at how much that took off. They kind of make a mess with all the shedding, but they cleaned up this G10 real nice. So real easy tip. If you ever need to clean a G10 scale, you use a magic eraser and uh, it takes off a lot of the minor surface wear. So yeah, really after the magic eraser and giving it a good rinse under some water, it, these scales came out pretty nice. So I was pretty satisfied with that part of the process. All right, so next up we're gonna work on the blade. And so it's been sitting in vinegar. And so a lot of that surface rust is just going to kind of wipe off initially. And then um, the question here was, was how clean do I want to get this blade? Because if I clean off too much, I'm going to lose a lot of the detail from the markings on the blade. And I don't want to do that, but I do want to stop any uh, surface rust that's formed from continuing. Um, so I'm going to clean it off and uh, use some metal polish to try and just uh, remove rust and try and bring it up to up to a good amount of cleanliness that it wasn't at before. Uh, but I definitely don't want to lose the Benchmade logo. Um, so my main goal here in polishing with this, this is a Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Uh, the main goal with this polish is going to be to clean up the pivot areas so that the pivot is nice and clean. And uh, I'm also going to work on that discoloration near the butterfly logo. Those kind of that kind of splotchy area that you might have seen earlier. Uh, my goal is, is going to be to remove the splotchy area without damaging the butterfly logo. So it's going to um, just be a lot of you know time consuming rubbing here. Surprisingly, it didn't take too long. This polish works pretty well. And seeing this much wear on the blade makes me wonder about its past and you know who used it and what their <laughs> what their use case was because so much of that bead blasted finish is just completely gone. 
I know some people like to remove bead blast on purpose because it promotes rust. So I'm wondering if someone just didn't polish this blade already. And that's why the logos seem to be so faint. Because that's definitely a possibility. So again, I'm just going to go through the process, try and rub out that discoloration near the logo and see how that process goes. So this whole process is just a lot of, you know, guess and check. You just work at it, take a look at the blade, keep working at it, take a look at the blade and repeat until you're happy with the result. I don't want it to be too over polished, but I, I want to get rid of that discoloration for sure. Overall, I like how it's coming out. Just a little bit more polishing, and I think we'll call it good on the blade. But yeah, overall, I'm satisfied with how this came out. All right, next up, we're gonna clean up the hardware. And so this has been sitting in the vinegar overnight, so it's uh, pretty easy to get it clean, just a little bit of brushing. And I'm gonna use that uh, magic eraser again to just, you know, sand down any surface rust that might be on these screws. And they all came out pretty nicely, to be honest. You know, just a slow, slow process, but it's really not too bad. So we'll just clean off each screw one by one. All right, let's just wipe down the work surface, get a little bit of the grime off, and I think we're almost ready to reassemble this knife. All right, so we have all the parts, you know, ready to go. Everything's looking nice and clean and shiny. I love how the titanium liners came out. They're super clean in comparison to what they were like initially. So that's awesome. Same with the G10, the G10 cleaned up really nice. So, so far so good. So we're just gonna get it back together and see if uh, we can still manage to assemble the knife with no blade play and see how that goes. So luckily these knives have a D-shaped pivot. So it's really easy to get the pivot inside the handle and you can orientate it correctly and no spinning. The plastic backspacer, unfortunately, did break during this process, but even reading in on comments from 
the era when these were produced, they were always kind of the weak point of this knife. And so 20 year old plastic plus cleaning, you know, it did crack. So I had to super glue it back together. So really straightforward reassembly process. Uh, I'm going to use some pivot lube on all the washers and contacts with the blade just to help the knife open smoothly. So this is KPL knife pivot lube and we're going to use that. Okay, just putting that titanium liner back on there. Pressing it down, we get this nice click. Love that click, very satisfying to hear that go right into place. And we're gonna get the pivot screw in there to snug that in and hold it in place. So again, the pivot is going to be a T8 and the body screws are all T6. So pretty common in the knife industry nowadays, and this is from the mid nineties. So very forward thinking. And this part was a little bit difficult <laughs> because the cameras were in the way. So it was very hard to align that backspacer and get that screw in there. So if it looks like I'm inept, that is <laughs> certainly why. <laughs> Without cameras, this would have been a lot easier process, but still it's doable. Right, and we have the two screws for the stop pin. And it's kind of interesting, the more you tighten or loosen these screws can help with the action of the blade. So with most folding knives, your only way to adjust the action is to loosen or tighten the pivot. But with this one, loosening the uh, stop pin screws can also help make opening the blade easier. So getting the action just right is always the key. And so what's really nice is it was pretty easy to get it right back into service and uh, the lockup is still, you know, full, but there's really no play in the blade, which is nice. And of course you can tell this is a different pocket clip. So this is just an extra bench made clip I had kind of hanging around. I think I might eventually get a custom clip for it, but for now this will work. Um, these split clips aren't my favorite from Benchmade. Uh, my favorite ones are the black oxidized, oxidized clips. Uh, they tend to wear really nicely, uh, but this is what I had available. So we'll see. Still very functional and it's very clean in comparison to what it had before. All right, so those screw heads cleaned up real nicely and uh, let's just snug those down. So overall build quality is pretty impressive. The only weak point of this knife I would say is that backspacer so getting an upgrade of that to metal would be nice uh, but you can see the screw heads are nice and clean the G10 nice and clean a lot of the minor markings on the G10 came right off and the blade isn't perfect you know there's a limit to how much I wanted to clean it up but it's definitely a lot better looking that major stain next to the butterfly is now diminished Action is still just right, just how it was when I when I got it. So overall, not too bad. The really only thing left to do with this knife is to sharpen it, and that's kind of the uh, 
the part that's going to be more challenging for me because I'm not really great at sharpening these chisel ground blades. So I know I'm not going to be able to get it to super razor sharpness, but right now there's absolutely no edge on it at all. So whoever, whoever used this knife, they, they, they worked it into the ground. You know, those serrations, you can see they're flat. There's not much life left in them at all. So let's just do that now. All right, all done. So hope you enjoyed this process and just documenting cleaning up this Benchmade 970. Again, just a lot cleaner than it was. Uh, there is an edge on it now. Again, it's not the greatest edge. <laughs> It'd be a shame at this point to send it into Life Sharp after I went through this whole process. But honestly, I might just to get a real sharp edge on this blade. I don't know what it is. I'm just not great at chisel ground edges. But still, nice, clean Benchmade 970. It's uh, worked really well for the last 20 plus years for its prior owner. And now it gets to join my collection. So very happy to share the process with you. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment below. Thanks. Bye-bye.